Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to Madden 18 on EA Sports. We've got two corners on the field today who are hoping they get a chance to create a big play on defense. It's Sherman's Seahawks going up against Peterson's Cardinals. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, thank you very much. We are pleased, as always, to be bringing you coverage of the National Football League presented by EA Sports. It's certainly hot outside here in the desert, but somehow this Cardinal crowd turned up the heat a moment ago. They were in a frenzy as their team emerged from the tunnel, and the Cardinals, they're set to do battle with Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. And a welcome in, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, so much gets made about offensive comparisons. Here's a matchup where the defenses may just take center stage. Yeah, we're usually talking about guys scoring touchdowns. How about the guys who prevent them and change the momentum of the game when they take the ball away? I love those ball hawks in the secondary. People after my own heart. Here's Blair Walsh now about ready to get us started. And this one is underway here on EA Sports. Here's Britton Golden now on the return. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. In his 11th NFL season, Drew Stanton will bring out the Arizona offense. And last week, I mentioned 11th season, just his 14th career start with Palmer out. They got the win, though. Yeah, he certainly did. He's 15 to 30, 201 yards, two touchdowns, the interception. The receivers trust him, but above all, his head coach Bruce Arians trusts him. Knows the offense. He's a tough, gritty type of a player. Play fake. Stanton under a heavy rush and down he goes. K.J. Wright coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. Yeah, blink of an eye. That happened fast and a big sack. Throw on second down. Stanton. He gets it into the hands of Larry Fitzgerald. And he is going to be knocked flat on his back. Oh, a big hit near the 48-yard line. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. The first carry now for Adrian Peterson. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. It'll be a loss of one, and it'll be second and 11. Michael Bennett's versatility, being able to play any position along the defensive front, allows him to make those types of plays. He finds good matchups and gets into the offensive backfield. And there it works for a tackle for loss. So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down. Operating from the gun, Stanton. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. 
And this offense on your screen, one of the guys who knows how to win football games, Larry Fitzgerald. Plenty of athleticism, but plays the game with incredible intelligence. Third and 11, and some extra depth of the secondary here. They're in the dime. From the gun, Stanton. And the Seahawk defense gets to him and they bring him down. Cam Chancellor coming in to drop him for a loss of eight. And it'll be fourth down. How about that one? The so-called little guys putting the pressure on. That was a strong safety. When I was in college, we often called that a lightning blitz. Andy Lee, three-time All-Pro on to punt. Back deep for the Seahawks, the All-Pro returner from 2015, Tyler Lockett. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. And a man under center for this Seattle offense, Russell Wilson, as they take the field. He put the ball in the air 45 times last week, but it was in a loss to Washington. How did you assess his play? Normal Russell Wilson in so many ways, but the pressure that Washington's defensive front seven put on him, couldn't hang in the pocket, had to flush a lot and try and beat Russell Wilson to make these creative plays, but the coverage downfield was excellent by Washington. Very hard for him to find open receivers. And he did throw two interceptions. Carry for Thomas Rawls. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. And that's why you see so many teams play a 3-4 defense, because that set gives you a lot of flexibility about where to bring pressure from, and it's hard for an offense to pick it up. Left side, right side, up the middle, especially with some really flexible linebackers. And the offense behind the chains here, a touch on second and 11. They stay on the ground, rolls again. Pretty nice move, but not a ton of space there. They stop him shy of the 25. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. And we take a look at the offense for the Seahawks. I believe Eddie Lacy found a home in Seattle because he heard from them that they like him for who he is, a big, strong, physical back. They won't worry as much about his weight as they will about his production and his ability to break down defenses carrying the ball in tough situations. On third down, Wilson. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. Wilson to lock it there for the Seahawks first down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. From the gun, it's Wilson. And some room to work. And he'll slide down to avoid the contact. Give him seven on the play, and that'll make this a second down. So second down, three yards to go now. They'll run it now out of the gun. And some room to maneuver. And he's going to get this all the way down in 
inside the 35. A big hitter there. A first down gain of 26 yards. And that's his longest run of the first quarter. And, Charles, we talked before the game about them needing to establish the run game. They'll be looking for more of that. And they got to the perimeter. So that tells me that that's part of the game plan of what they want to get done today. So they'll have some complimentary runs where he'll run it to the inside. But it appears that when they want the big yardage, they think they can get to the outside and make it happen. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Now a play fake here on first down. Room here to run. And he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. And here comes play number six on this drive. On first and ten, it's Wilson. It's caught, lock it. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up a second and 11. And that was well defended. And as a cornerback, what you're taught when you see a wide receiver screen, Either you get underneath the play before the blocking forms, or you're going to have to fight your way through it by getting through some blocking. That was a really nice play there. A little bit of ground to make up for the offense as they face a second and 11. Here's Wilson. And he's going to go down here as sack. They push him back to the 34. Corey Peters forcing his way through there to drop him for a loss of a good 10 yards. This Cardinals pass rush in 2016 got home 48 times. That's a pretty good number. A very good number. Led the league. Is it just because the dudes that they had or the scheme or both or what? It's always the dudes first, but their scheme, attacking, pressure, they'll continue to pile up the sacks. Wilson of the Seahawks looking for something big following the sack. It's third and long here. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. As my dad used to tell me all the time, when you're going ready to play a big-time game, especially when you have one going into a dome setting, Better strap it up tight because that crowd can really affect things. Especially on third downs like the one we just saw there with the incompletion. I don't think this will even, nope, it doesn't even get there. Well short, and this will remain a scoreless game. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. The Cardinal offense now making their way back out onto the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. After the missed kick, they're in really good position. They'll begin this drive at the 39 now. Green 39. Green 39. They start the drive with Peterson. And able to get a couple as he's across the 40 to the 41. 
And the big meet on the D-line. We'll see how they do today. And I'd hate to be an offensive lineman having to deal with these guys. They come in hungry, mean, and confident. They think that no one can block them. Eight yards to go here on second down. They run again with Peterson. And he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. Hey, how about Adrian Peterson last week? He's 32 years old. He had a career height 37 carries. Yeah, for 159 yards against the 49ers. The most in history by a player 32 years or older. So that fits totally the nickname he prefers, AD, for all day. Andre Ellington, his first carry. Oh, he's got some breathing room. There he goes, right side. Touchdown, Cardinals. A big play there. 58 yards. And the Cardinals have taken the early lead. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. Here's Phil Dawson now for the point after. And the Cardinals will go up 7 to nothing. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And the last play, a really nice run that culminated in the touchdown. Here's Dawson now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Seahawks offense now, they get set to go back to work. Now they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there. We've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? Well, throw on first down with Wilson. And a grab made by Doug Baldwin. 15 yards through the air and a first down. I don't care how many times you tell the story, it never loses its luster for me. Doug Baldwin, undrafted out of Stanford, and plays like a number one receiver should in the NFL. I don't care how you cover him. I don't care that his size isn't great. He's the one that typically comes up with the football. Absolutely. His roots go all the way back to Gulf Breeze, Florida, where he's from right on the water near Pensacola, and then, of course, to Stanford, and, boy, he's been good. First down, this is Rawls. Strong run, but he's corralled just beyond the 40. So down on the ground still is Rawls. And you remember his knee injury and hope that it's not a re-aggravation. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back.
See if they stay on the ground for second down. The play fake to Lacey. Now this is Wilson. And he's going to be out of bounds down near the 35-yard line. 23 yards on the play. That's a matchup. Maybe they go back to their outer third of the field as this game continues. Yeah, I think back to my high school coach, John Ford, he used to say when we got big plays early in a game or good plays, he'd always say, foul it away, lad. Foul it away because he'd want to come back to it later in a key situation. They may come back to this one a little more often than that. Didn't he say laddie or did he say lad? Yeah, it just depended on what he was feeling at the okay. moment. Okay, I thought, I thought that was the guy you told me about that used to say laddie a lot. Laddie? When you heard laddie, he was usually in a pretty good mood. Lad? Yeah. On first down, Wilson. Complete. Richardson has it. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 11 more yards that go around. A first down as well. Well, they obviously read man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield. Then he curls back inside for the completion. Now Wilson on first down. A dump off to Lacey. Give him eight on the play, and it'll be second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. And now the offense operates in the red zone. They'll run for the first time with Lacey. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. time it's rolls and a nice move will yield nothing as he stopped behind the line that's going to go as a loss of two and it'll be second down one of the beauties of a 3-4 defense is that you have flexibility with your linebackers and you can put them in different spots but one of the downsides is an offensive team that's committed to running the football you can get your big offensive lineman up on linebackers quicker and that usually gives you an advantage in running it Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. On second down, here's Wilson. And he's got his man on the out route. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. First down and goal. The offense knocking on the door. <laughs> on the ground, Rawls. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. And the 
seven defensive starters for Arizona. Spotlight, please, and a little traveling music for Dayon Buchanan because he came into the league as a safety, a first-round pick of the Arizona Cardinals. Now he might as well just be known as an inside linebacker, even though he's undersized. Has a great ability to slip blockers and make big-time tackles. He's been a West Coast guy through and through, born in the Bay Area, went to Washington State, now in Arizona. say uh -uh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage this will be a two-yard loss on the play and that'll make it third and goal two straight shots on the ground now on third do you go to the air i think the possibility exists and if you're doing it you're probably going play action since you ran it twice but i often think the second down is the time you go play action and throw the ball i say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory Two, now Wilson. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone for the Seahawk touchdown. Luke Wilson, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Seahawks just an extra point away from tying this thing up. And he is a reliable target. They like to get him involved. They got him involved there for the score. And they should. He's a very good player. Remember, they can use him in certain positions, so many different spots, and he usually comes through for them. Blair Walsh on to attempt the extra point. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. A touchdown apiece here in this first quarter of play. Seven all is the score. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon hits the Seahawks with a football to begin quarter number two, as we'll see one following the score on the final play before break. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And the Cardinals getting set to trot out there now. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense getting the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. Here's Peterson as they begin on the ground. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. That run is what defenses don't like about dealing with Adrian Peterson. His ability to drop a shoulder and run through contact. And he's amazing at keeping those strong legs going, isn't he? For him, no run is ever truly over. I mean, he's actually not even convinced that when they blow the whistle, he's actually down. That's how he finishes runs in a big way. They run again on first down, Peterson. And he'll push his way up to about the 44 here. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far. And after that last run, 
not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. On second down, Peterson. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker, and now it's third down. A nickel look by Seattle on third down. Yep, five defensive backs now. Stanton. Here's a screen to Powell. He's got a first down and then some inside the 40. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sense that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. This is Williams. And a big collision there as he winds up flat on his back right near the 27. 11 more on that one and another first down. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. They stick to the ground game on first down. It's Williams. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. Second down, Williams. And he's going to bring this one down to right about the 20-yard line. That second down run, a big help. The seven yards leaves him with just a third and three now. Well, that's why the guy with the headsets is down there. All right, they know what they're doing because they got stuffed on a running plan first down. And I think myself and probably the fans were saying throw the football in this situation. But he knew what he was doing, called another run. And now they've got third and short. The Cardinals on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This time it's third and three. Now Stanton. And he's got Gresham. And he's brought down. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. I'd love to sit down at some point in our offseason and talk to these defensive coordinators in the red zone Tight end is obviously a big threat, yet these guys continue to make plays. Is there any other way to stop them? Apparently not. In the red zone, like you said, that's your guy. They got it to him. Supreme confidence in going to a playmaker. His way in, not giving up, and it's a Cardinal touchdown. Adrian Peterson taking it in, and the Cardinals have taken the lead. Second effort there, he was determined to find pay dirt, and he did. I think that's a great example of what coaches talk about, a back that runs behind his pads, and he uses pads to get him into the end zone. Extra point try now for Dawson. He's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it's capped off by a touchdown run by Adrian Peterson.
Here's Dawson now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. Spinning away. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Here's the Cardinals' defense as they head out to set up shop. And a tight ball game here, and in these close ones, every drive becomes magnified. And we don't want to overuse the word critical, but it feels that way as they head out there for this possession. They need to get the ball back and give their offense a chance to get them totally back into this game. We'll see if the defense can do just that here. take this one up close to the 25 yard line two yards on the carry there it'll be second down not a big run on the first play of the drive but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play sometimes you're just trying to settle in get your guys a little bit of contact and get things moving on second down Wilson Baldwin with it over the middle Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. The Seahawks on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and four. From the shotgun, Wilson, and almost picked off. I guess the good news for them now, it's fourth down. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and then just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. Now John Ryan, 12th year in the league, on to punt it away as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. This is taken at about the 14. That's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the Cards will take over first and 10. Adrian Peterson now getting ready to go again on offense. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. First down, Stanton, and his throw is going to be incomplete. Jaron Brown, the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. There's so much precision in an offense, especially when you're throwing the ball, and in an out route, plenty of it. How about the quarterback hitting his back foot, balls out of his hands, receiver making his break, making his cut. He's got to time up perfectly. Not always easy to do. Just let him a little too much. Yeah, I remember back in the good old days, I was talking to a quarterback, and he said everything they did was on the count system. So when he took a snap. And Peterson, what happened? He lost the football. And the Seahawks have recovered. I know he carries it a lot. I know he touches it a lot. But he does have a tendency to turn it over, and sometimes in some real key situations. I just don't see how with that death grip handshake yeah. Adrian Peterson has, I would figure the ball would never pop for him. Yeah, you've talked about that a lot, but you give your star like AP a little bit of a break here, right? Oh, without a doubt, because you can talk about those fumbles, and then you remember all the gigantic plays that he makes, and you learn to live with a few of them. Really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit. Yeah. 
Wilson again to Rawls. They'll be brought down at the 21 after a pickup of four. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. Now Wilson on second down. His throw caught right around the six. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong arm guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. They'll try to run with Rawls. And that'll get him halfway there as he takes it from the six to the three-yard line. Not a whole lot there after the penalty, but remember, it was first and five, not first and ten. So now they can keep grinding out first downs and good things can happen for them. Just second and short coming up. They go again with Rawls. They're able to get a couple here, but won't get across the plane as they stop him right around the one. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. The offense on third down, they've hit two for four thus far. They're looking at a third and goal here. They'll run it with Lacey. And he's across the chalk into the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks. Eddie Lacey taking it in from a yard out. And the Seahawks just an extra point away from tying this thing up. Well, they decided to run it in and got it done on third and goal. A lot of times, that's a passing play. And the kicker just has to come out for the PAT. He can breathe a sigh of relief as well, right? Although I don't know if he's really breathing a sigh of relief. I think he likes to put three points on his ledger. Walsh now for the PAT. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it's finished off by a touchdown run coming from Eddie Lacy. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. The Cardinals offense now works their way back onto the field. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions. But some are worse than others. So you can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense. But when you turn it over, it changes momentum. And when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. First down, here's the run with Peterson. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. Let's go. Looking to throw on second down. Stanton. It's brought in complete. It's John Brown. 
And that's a big collision. He's knocked backward as they will mark him down at the 47-yard line. Tenth carry now for Peterson. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Well, partner, they've been running it well the entire game, and the big guys up front, they're a huge reason why. And now they're reaping the benefits as they continue to open up big holes and gain nice yardage. Throw on second down. Stanton caught right side. Gresham. It goes as a gain of eight that moves the chains. Now, coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting into the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? And gets the call running left. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. So two minutes to go in a wild first half. More from the desert after this. A reminder, coming up here at halftime, we'll ship you off to Orlando. Larry Ridley will have first half highlights and analysis. LR, plenty to show in this one. Going to be a busy man at intermission. So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down. Looking to throw, Stanton. To the sideline and it's caught, but boy, he's out of bounds. Well, they tried to get him into space coming out of the backfield, but it'll be third down. That was a nice catch, but unable to stay in bounds. And remember, it wasn't a wide receiver who works on that all the time. <laughs> I was gonna say, he, he likes to get the ball handed to him. Now, don't get me wrong, he's part of the passing game as well, but maybe a little out of his comfort zone there. Yeah, he might want to have a few words to say to us about that later, but I am still going with you on that one. Wide receivers work on it a little bit more. Back to throw, Stanton. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Here's Andy Lee now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. The Seahawks offense now. They get ready to come back onto the field. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown. Now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage looked defensively. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. 
He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. So he can't hang on. And as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard. Maybe from you. I don't know. But you're going to get hit anyways. Might as well hold on to the ball. Well, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. Again on second and ten, it's Wilson. Oh, nearly picked. And maybe lucky there. This guy doesn't drop many defensively. Third down. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. The Seahawks on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and ten. Wilson turns and gives to Procise. Now here's a timeout defensively coming from the Cardinals. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Here's John Ryan now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. of 54 yards well struck and that will come the offense as they take over so out now come the Cardinals and you know their previous possession they were able to move the football but still wound up punting in the end you know in 2016 Carolina had a 20 play drive mm, yeah. that lasted over 10 minutes and remember how it ended? In a punt. Yeah, I mean, how does that happen? You just don't see that happen every day. And this one may be not quite that bad, but still, you'd like to have a chance for points if you hold the football that long. Agreed. Here we go now. Green, 39. On first and 10, Stanton. Fitzgerald bringing it in over the middle. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Throwing on first down, Stanton, and Nelson's got it here right side. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. Second down now after the pass completion. Operating from the gun, Stanton. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to AP out of the backfield, and it's third down. The Cardinals on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and eight. From the gun, Stanton. 
He checks it down here to Ellington. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. And now the Seahawks are going to take a timeout here on defense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Here's Andy Lee now as he's on to punt for Arizona. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field, and they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. They start on the ground with Rawls. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Here's Wilson from the gun. He'll throw. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field, it's popped up in the air. I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Wilson going to give to Rawls. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. Nice job there defensively on third down. Not only did they string the play out, but they didn't allow any room for a cutback. Really well organized on the defensive side. So we've hit halftime all even at 14 apiece. As we send you on down to our studios in Orlando, where standing by is Larry Ridley with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to the EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. Let's take a look back at the first half. As we look at the numbers, the only thing that really matters is that we've got a tie game. We'll have another half here to figure out who can come out on top. So here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Third and seven. Ellington's going to dart up the middle, and he'll take this all the way for the touchdown. Cart moves up by a touchdown. Seahawks now late in the first. Wilson's going to find his mark, and he kept off the long drive with the touchdown. The Seahawks tied up at seven. Cardinals on offense midway through the second. Peterson's going to use a stiff arm to get away, and he kept off the nine-play drive with a TD. Offense out now after the fumble. That takes the lead up to seven. Lacey's looking for room to run, and this four-play drive goes for a touchdown. Okay, LR, we are indeed all even as these teams come back out for the second half.
So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This is taken at his four. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And out now come the Seahawks. First half showed us some pretty good offense. Tie game. We'll see what the second half brings. And it'll be interesting because I think both sides feel pretty good about what their offenses are doing. Got to wonder what adjustments are being made defensively to try and get a spark and maybe slow down the other side. But here, do you change up anything on this opening drive? Not offensively, you don't. You've got everything going your way. You've probably prepared for maybe some change-ups you might expect. But overall, you like what your game plan showing you. Second half starts with a run by Rawls. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. Call it a loss of two on the play. And that'll make it second and 12. Wow, that play got shut down in a hurry. As soon as the snap came, you could see defensively they were just closing in. That was going nowhere. Yeah, you count on your offensive line to give you a little bit of space, a little bit of time so you can make a move. There was none there for him. It's already second and 12. The defense hoping to push him back more. A fake to Rawls. Now it's Wilson. It's caught on the left side by Baldwin. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A very solid gain of 27. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Out of the pistol, it's Rawls. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats, but really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. Again, Rawls. He's been busy tonight. They find some open field here. And he's going to get this inside the 30. That good for 19 at a first down. That's how you get right up off of the map because on the last play, they stoned him in the backfield and dropped him for a loss. But he's the type of guy that scared me a little bit because he's not daunted. Just got right back up, showed some confidence, and picked up a first down with his very next run. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now a first down carry. It's Lacey. He'll be stopped short of the 25. The nice move couldn't free him. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Doesn't matter who you're rooting for in this game. The effort of the man with the football getting away from one and trying to turn forward and get some yardage. I really liked what he did there. Now they'll throw it with Wilson. Looking left side and he's got a man. It's Baldwin. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22 yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. 
And the Seahawks on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and four. From the gun, it's Wilson. He's got Lockett. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Inside the red zone, the offense will operate. From the red zone now, here's Wilson on first down. That is caught inside the five. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. first and goal Wilson will throw again and it pops free the collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down down this close to the goal line first down surprised that wasn't a run I am and you know I'm old school I want to run the ball first down in this situation because second down that gives me an option of running play action and maybe throwing it Second down now after the incompletion. Offensive line wasn't set. There's the flag, and five yards back they go. Quarterback has to look around and make sure that his team is ready to go. Sometimes the quarterbacks go faster than is necessary. Still second down. Interesting third and goal. On goal-to-goal -goal runs, when you create lost yardage plays, the only way that happens is either call pressure or what I like to call straight-ahead pursuit. A great read, and they get to the backfield and make the play. And that was a big chunk of yardage lost. And this offense on third down today, they've hit four of seven. This is third and goal. Now Wilson to the flat that's complete to his running back and he'll be brought down here at the three yard line they are able to get nine yards out of that but now it's fourth down I know most of the time when the ball's in the air you're thinking wide receiver tight end but running backs they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays and for the second time tonight this field goal unit comes out here from the left half should be a fairly easy one here And Walsh able to convert it as his kick is good. And they take a 17-14 lead. So he missed a field goal earlier, but he says not this time. And he's able to knock it through to give his guys three. And that's all you want as a kicker, a chance to redeem yourself. You can't have a short memory if you're going to survive at this level. And he's able to get back on track. Now after the made field goal, Walsh back out to kick it away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. 
And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. <laughs> Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. Throwing to start the drive. Stanton over the middle complete. It's Fitzgerald. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And he goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. One of the selling points at the end route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. to Peterson and he loses the football a second time and the Seahawks have picked it up and they take possession two yards away from midfield at the 48 yard line I know this may come a little bit out of left field but have you ever shaken Adrian Peterson's hand well, you told me it just engulfs you I mean it engulfs you and it crushes you all right you get done shaking his hand and you may not have a hand which always surprises me later that he has as many fumbles as he has in a game. I wouldn't figure that anyone could get the ball out of his hands. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point... The kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Bashed it. <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they'll get him down here at about the 42. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. First play of the drive, let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher, a really nice run. Looking to throw on second down. It's caught. Baldwin. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. The offense on third down tonight, they're at 50%, four for eight. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. They run with a power back, Rawls, and he'll get nothing out of that one. Brandon, they're still in the lead, but momentum's certainly been going the opposite direction, so to me, that's a really important pickup there on third down. Try and regain some confidence, and you're right. They need to stem the tide a little bit. That certainly helped. for Thomas Rawls. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. 
Well, he didn't make headway on that one, but he's had plenty of carries all night long. I just wonder if maybe he's a little bit tired from toting the rock that much. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. On second down, Lacey. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. Only a yard of the pickup there, so it leaves him needing a conversion here on third and a tough nine. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game, and while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. And the Seahawks on third down, five out of nine thus far. This is third and nine. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. He finds his man, Baldwin. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. Going old reliable there to the slot on third down. And the slot position has become the bane of just about every defense's existence because how do you cover? Do you go with a bigger guy to try and use size? Can I go with, try go with a quicker guy and sometimes even get out quick there? Very difficult to match up with that slot receiver. That's why they keep going back to him. And he's had the hot hand. Down, this is Rawls. And this play gets blown up. They'll lose yardage back at the 17. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Ah, oh, yes, that's today's NFL defensive tackle. Not just a space eater anymore. A guy with agility, movement skills, who can rush the passer and make plays in the offensive backfield. to throw on second down. And he will go down outside of the pocket for a sack. Tried to get away, but could not. Josh Morrow in there to get him for what will be a loss of 13 yards. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they left little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it, but it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. Wilson of the Seahawks looking for something big following the sack. It's third and long here. Play action. It's Wilson. He's going to float this one deep right side. And a shot taken on third down unsuccessful. Fourth down now. They bounced up after taking a sack and took a shot downfield. I think a lot of us thought maybe he'd run draw in that situation instead. Tried to get all back in one play. Yeah, third and long. Thought he needed the deep pass. Couldn't connect it. Maybe he was hoping for a penalty downfield to give him the yardage they needed. And his kick is good. Didn't hit it all that well, but he got enough on it to put it through. And they stretch the lead to six. It's 20 to 14 now. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive only yields three points. Yeah, they were able to move the football, but the defense stiffened once their backs were to the end zone, and they were able to hold them to just three. After the made field goal, Walsh back out to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. And last time they coughed it up. 
led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though, when oh, they only yeah. gave up the field yeah. goal? And they were able to trot back out on the field and start this drive. A little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown. But they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach will just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think the coach would be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield and punch in the end zone without turning it over. Let's go! They start the drive with Peterson. And heavy contact. He is knocked down hard. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. I'm no offensive mastermind, but of all the guys on the field to block, you might want to stop him. Look, I've got a very simple rule. An unblocked defender is usually your best defender, and he ended up making the play there. Again with Peterson. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. No gain that time, but it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. They were in the 4-3. Mike Linebacker made a great tackle. And when that happens, generally it means that the guys up front, the four down defensive linemen, have absorbed all the blockers and allowed him to run free to the football. He ends up with a textbook tackle. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Welcome back to the desert. We're in Glendale. It's Cardinal football, but they trail here as we get set to bring you the fourth and final quarter. The Cardinals on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and 11. Hurry up, here we go. Green, 39. Green, 39. Operating from the gun, Stanton. Finding his safety valve here. That's complete. Give him three on the play, and it'll be fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Here's Andy Lee now, as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. They'll hand to Rawls. And they'll get him down up past the 15. They needed some breathing room. He gave it to him. 11 yards and a first down. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage. Work on that clock. See if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football. Gain some yardage and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. On first down, he's got a man. It's his fullback. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. Six yards on the pickup, and it'll make it second down. Now, that's often a surprise for the defensive guys when they see the big fella slide out of the backfield and catch the ball. Not something they usually go over in practice very often. 
Second down and four. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. On second down, rolls. And the window closes quickly. He'll only get up to the 22-yard line. It'll only be a gain of a yard, and it sets up a third down and four now. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Now it's Wilson. They're able to locate Wilson. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. And give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. down Wilson he's gonna leave this for his running back it's complete he'll be stopped shy of the 45 despite a great move it'll be a three-yard gain and it'll be a second down and just in general Charles on a play like that how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield it's very difficult especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. Decent chunk of yardage still left here, second and seven. Off the play fake to Rawls. Wilson. He's got the hook up here on the comebacker. Complete. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. And now a first down following that long game. Now a give. Right side, it's Rawls. Nothing doing. Barely able to muster a yard to hit the 35. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Now think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. Wide open receiver complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Yeah, and able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. That'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. 
six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Another run, but this time it's Rawls. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the nine. Just a gain of a yard, but it's going to set him up with a first and goal. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. Well, just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. Now it's Wilson. And he's got it. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. Luke Wilson, a beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Seahawks add on to their lead. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where would you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that into the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. Wilson now operating from the gun and he's got it so the two-point conversion is good and they add on to their fourth quarter lead so they go with a pass there on the two-point try and able to convert it Charles and a good job by the offense figuring out their two-point play and using it well it's interesting how people are using the strategy nowadays though isn't it it really is and I don't know how much that one that particular play factored in but with the PAT moving back in 15 16 that kind of changed things didn't it it's really a part of everyone's strategy now when I talk with coaches and when we sit with them they always talk about they actually have two two-point periods in practice now, something they never really did before. Here's Walsh now to kick this one off. This is fielded at the goal line. And he's got some space here. And he's going to take this all the way down inside the 40. There's no downplaying that we all knew that this was a critical possession. And to get a return like that to start things off, that's the spark that they needed. That's the spark they were looking for. The Cardinal offense here ready to take over. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. And they'll start this drive with very good field position. And look like some movement there. Let's get the call. So that one will be accepted. Still first down. to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. It's a solid pickup of 11, and it's second down. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. Here we go. 
Looking to throw on second down. Stanton. And he'll be out of bounds. Able to get it down to the 25 there. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. Let's make this one simple. What a catch. Especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds. Toe tapping and of course foot dragging. A little tapestry if you will. Oh I like it. And the offense lining up first and ten. Here we go now. Green 39. Green 39. Operating from the gun. Stanton. Oh, and this ball's tipped and intercepted. Picked off by the Pro Bowl safety cam chancellor. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. This spot in the fourth quarter with that deficit had to throw the football. Unfortunately, there's the risk of big turnover. And you know you're going to be throwing against nickel, dime, all sorts of exotic defenses, but you have to do it anyway. Ordinarily, you might want to run the football a little bit, try and get them out of it. But as you noted, this time of the game, this point on the clock, had to throw it. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are. But with that last drive that culminated in a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. It doesn't matter where you start with the football now. They have to feel great about their opportunity. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. After the interception, here's Wilson. And it's caught over the middle. Wilson, 12 yards there as they move the chains. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football. Are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? <laughs> Atlanta had the lead against New England, and just, they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. it I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. On second down, Wilson. Complete. He was looking for Thomas Rawls there. And it's third down. An extra DB added here for the cards on third. Blitzer play coverage. Wilson from the gun. He'll throw. Throw left side complete. That's Baldwin. And that went good for 16 yards and a first. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. So here we go, first and ten now. Now a play fake here on first down. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. And on second and ten now. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Encroachment on the defense. A little 
Yancey on the left side of the line. Yeah, I think they got the guy in the end. I think they got the DN there on that one. And let's face it, he is so amped up. Wanting to get a good get off on the snap. Jump too quickly. Second and five. They give it to Rawls. Call it a gain of four there, so it sets up a big play here. Third and a yard. They're pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. So they run it on second down. Now let's see what third down brings here for the offense. They stay on the ground. Rawls again. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. Getting late in the fourth now, Charles. Two-minute warning just around the corner. Yeah, some teams just want to get to that spot, take a breath, and then come out and attack for the rest of the game. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. right to Rawls. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. Now a handoff left to Rawls. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get it behind the line. Whistles now and a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 1.51 left. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. This offense, two for two on third downs on this drive. They're in for a tough test here, though. Third and long. Wilson going to hand it to Procise. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. That will be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. Hey, 
So on fourth down, Pete Carroll's going to call out his field goal unit. This to make it a three-score game late. And that is not going to get there. Oh, he missed it short. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, it's still a good-sized lead, so they haven't necessarily needed him. But this is now two missed field goals for him in this game so far. Yeah, and the question now is, will he be prepared when they do need him? Whether that's later in this game or sometime down the line, having a kicker you can count on is definitely imperative. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive? Or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got to jump here. Encroachment, the defense. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. Still first down. here on first down and incomplete on the deep ball Larry Fitzgerald was the intended target and that'll bring up second down this defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball and they were more than ready for it they've got the lead fourth quarter maybe can expect more passes like that downfield to throw on second down. Stanton. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield across the 45. 15 yards through the air and a first down. Clock management definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. So the offense has it first and 10. From the gun, Stanton. He's got the hook up to John Brown on the right side. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. First down now, but that clock rolling. On first down, Stanton. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. The completion good for three, and it's second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They tackle them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Play action, Stanton. His throw caught at about the five. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. 19 yards on the pickup there, and now they'll have it first and goal. Now Stanton. And he takes this one into the end zone, and all of a sudden, here in the final minute, things get a little bit tighter. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. You got a one-score game now. Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, get that hands team ready. No doubt about it. Oh. 
Now Dawson for the extra point. He's got it, and they're back within a touchdown at 28-21. That time, a six-play drive, and it's finished off with a five-yard touchdown run. So still a little over 40 seconds to go. Time enough to put a drive together if they can get this onside kick. And this is going to be taken in by the Seahawks. And it would appear they're on their way to victory now. They had to go for it with no timeouts remaining, though, now. This one's as good as over. They gave it an effort. They tried their best, did everything they could to try and get the ball on the onside kick. You're exactly right. They had to try it. It was their only option. And now... This game is done. Just take it, kneel, and call it a day. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is, do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. The Seahawks in victory formation as they go ahead and take the knee. time and that should just about do it a road win in the national football league charles you never take that for granted no matter who you're playing no matter where you're playing you take it and you run with it <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility no one thinks we can do this only people who believe are right here in this room and then you go on the road band together and get it done So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. With that, we say good night from Glendale.